crime and punishment. Not even a judge is above the law. Dialan Pasco in 40 minutes here on BBC One Wales. First, those big money balls are about to drop. Welcome to the last in the current series of the National Lottery Winning Lines, the show that features the National Lottery draw. And don't forget a nice big rollover this week. We've also got the National Lottery Thunderball draw and the Winning Lines Wonderwall, where one of our contestants, like a Tiger Woods drive, stands a chance of going thousands of miles around the world. <laughs> now, if you fancy being a contestant on the first show of the new series next year, all you have to do is to match the six numbers we're going to be generating in tonight's show to the last six digits of your phone number in any order and then phone in and answer a general knowledge question. And next series, you can be here. And that's what this lot did. Hello, you 49ers. And nice to see you all. Thanks for coming down for the last in this series. Uh, you come, of course, from all walks of life and I'd like to uh, pick out one of them and that's... Tracy Baker at seat number 29. All right, Tracy. Hello, Simon. Well, what's your walk of life? What do you do? I sell wigs for a living. And where, and where do you sell wigs? In London. Whereabouts in London? In uh, London Bridge area. OK. Now, uh, what, I'm not really sort of up in the wig stakes, so uh, what, what's, what's your biggest seller, then? What's the number one rug this the year? The Little Beauty. A Little Beauty? <laughs> yeah. OK. And, uh, and what does that look like, then? That's a small little grey number which most of our lovely ladies wear. Oh, right. OK. Now, I wonder, could you do us a favour? Yeah. I don't, I don't want you to be uh, embarrassing or anything. Could you sort of look around our 49ers and uh, have a good look, and above you as well? And without mentioning any numbers, do you, do you see any sort of possible toupees or wigs amongst us? Quite a few good candidates here. Do you reckon? Yeah. Well, I think, I think what we could do, and you can, you can try this at home, actually, every time we get to a close-up uh, during the programme, <laughs> play this game at home, what do you think? Is it real? Toupee or not toupee? Is it a wig? <laughs> well, OK, so we'll work with that. And also, you've got a couple of... A couple of customers you'd like to say hello to? Yeah, hello, Jean, hello, Rita. They're particularly regulars, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are. Do they want to be pointed out as wig wearers on national television? No. They don't? <laughs> but they have just been. Oh, yeah. So, Jean and Rita. So, if you're sitting next to a Jean or a Rita who's just started coughing <laughs> or uh, trying to sort of distract you in another way, give the hair a tug and see what happens. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. Tracy, wish you all the best. Thank you. And all our 49ers wish you all the best for tonight. I'm going to be giving you the uh, all-important phone number shortly, so make sure you have a pen and paper handy. Now, uh, this show is all about numbers, and the big number of the week is 10. The government has unveiled a 10-year plan for commuters that includes a new initiative to speed up public transport. They're going to put Jack Straw in charge of buses. <laughs> Which is a fair point. Now, uh, much as I love and admire our 49ers, for most of them, this show is like Brad Pitt on the most eligible bachelor list. They're not going to be on it for much longer. <laughs> Only six of them will be going through to round two, and this is how we do it. The rules, like confidential memos to Tony Blair, are very easy to pick up. <laughs> I'm going to ask a question which has a numerical answer, and whoever answers it correctly in the fastest time goes through. In short, you've got to be fast to last, but if you get it wrong, you're out. And don't forget, the people who do go through generate six numbers for us. If those six numbers appear anywhere in the last six digits of your phone number, you could be sitting here next series playing for our fantastic top prize, an amazing three-week trip around the world. point out that those calm and tranquil, peaceful beach scenes were actually filmed before the schools broke up. <laughs> but I'm sure you have a fantastic holiday. Let's try and win you one. Let's play Winning Lines. <laughs> OK, folks, here we go. Question number one. If you doubled the number after catch in the title of Joseph Heller's famous novel, which number would feature? Question number one. Winning Lines tonight. If you doubled the number after 
catch in the title of Joseph Heller's famous novel. Which number would feature? OK, that's it. Time's up. Let's turn the lights pink, please, of everyone who took part in question number one. That's a pretty good go for question number one, I think. 25 people taking part in this one, 24 waiting for something else. Uh, the answer is, of course, Catch-22. Catch-22 is the book, uh, so we'll double that to 44. 44 is what we wanted, let's see if we get it. Let's turn them red and blue, please. Uh, red for wrong, blue for true. We have 24 people getting it right, and just the one person sitting in front of me looking slightly fed up. Afraid your light's gone red and we lose you from the game. Thanks for playing. 24 people getting it absolutely right. Who is quickest? Top three like this. Third place, Brian Grice. <laughs> Beaten into second place by Bernard Pope. And our first qualifier, and through to the next round in 2.41 seconds. Well done, Pete Latham, seat number 20. Well done, Pete. Good. Just bend your head forward a bit. Bend your head forward a bit. <laughs> no, that, that's real, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just playing the wig game. That's it. No, you're fine. <laughs> uh, so he's sitting in seat number 20. We'll lose the two. We'll keep the zero. That's the first number for our winning line tonight. It's a zero, and we have more numbers to come. OK, folks, question number two. How many degrees are there in a right angle? I can hear the keyboards being hit with much excitement and ferocity. How many degrees are there in a right angle? OK, that's it. Time is up. Uh, let's see how many players we have for question number two, please. That's a big display of pink. We have 29 players for this question. It is, of course, 90, 90 degrees in a right angle. I think a lot of people will have got that right, or I can hear some titters, so maybe not everyone got it. Let's turn to red and blue, please. <laughs> Distressing number of reds, I think. Uh, 21 people getting it right, eight people getting it wrong. We will draw a veil over their embarrassment. If their lights have just gone red, we'll lose them from the game. Thanks for playing. 21 right answers, who is quickest? Top three like this. In third place, Keith Summerhay. He was very fast, actually, not fast as Peter Holmes. Peter is second. And our next qualifier through the next round, 1.73 seconds. Well done, Andy Watford. See you number nine. Well done, Andy. You've got your own as well, haven't you? Sorry. It's all right, the man. Andy's in seat number nine, so we'll lose the zero and we'll keep the nine. OK, we have two digits for our winning line now. We have a zero and a nine, and we have four more digits to come. Next question, please. If St. Swithin's Day was exactly seven days later, what would the July date be? Question number three, winning lines tonight for our remaining 38 players. If St. Swithin's Day was exactly seven days later, what would the July date be? OK, that's it. Time's up. Let's uh, see who took part in question number three, please. Tell them pink. Oh, uh, just the five players for this, and 33 people can't quite remember about St. Swithin's Day, uh, which was, of course, last Saturday, uh, July the 15th. So you add seven days, you get to the 22nd, which is today. 22 is what we wanted. Let's see if we did get 22 from our few players. Uh, let's turn them red and blue, please. Red for wrong and blue for true. Three people getting it right. Two people are getting it absolutely wrong. And if their lights have gone red, they're out of the game. Thanks for playing. So we have uh, three people getting it right. This is the order that they did things in. In third place, Jenny Turkentine. In second place, he's been third before. He's speeding up a bit. That's Keith Summerhays. And our next qualifier through to the next round, 3.75 seconds. Well done, Ted Higgins, seat number 43. <laughs> All right, Ted. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Uh, Ted's through to the next round, and he's at 43. We'll lose the four, and we'll keep the three. Halfway through for our winning line tonight, and uh, we have a zero, a three, and a nine. Three more digits to come. Question number four. If Henry VIII had married three more Catherines, how many wives called Catherine would he have had in total? Question four. If Henry VIII had married three more Catherines, how many wives called Catherine would he have had in total? 
Thinking back to that TV series, how many? OK, that's it. Time's up. Let's see how many people took part in question number four. Please turn those lights pink. Seven people having a go at this. 28 people can't remember, frankly. Well, he was married to three Catherines. There was Catherine of Aragon, Catherine Parr and Catherine Howard. So add another three, uh, which I'm sure would have been fine by him. You get to six. Six is what we wanted. Let's see if we got it. We'll turn them red for wrong and blue for true, please. <laughs> Two people getting it right, five people getting the amount of wives confused, which is fair enough, really. Uh, but there are five red lights and we lose everyone from the game. Thanks for playing. So there we are, we have two people getting it right. Let me tell you who the two people are. One of them is Jenny Turkentine, seat number 47. The other one is sitting in seat number 12. She's Jackie Pierce. One of them did it in 9.48 seconds. The other did it in 5.67 seconds. The qualifier, and through to the next round for round two, is Jackie Pierce, seat number 12. Well done, Jackie. Excellent. And I don't think that's a little beauty, is it, Dan? No, that's definitely <laughs> And, of course, Jackie's sitting at seat number 12, so we'll lose the one and we'll keep the two. Next number for our winning line, which now looks like this. A zero, a two, a three and a nine. A next question, please. If Paul Simon had sung about one less way to leave your lover in his 1976 hit, how many ways would there have been? And what a great tune it was. If Paul Simon had sung about one less way to leave your lover in his 1976 hit, how many ways would there have been? 29 players having a guess. this. OK, that's it. Time's up. Let's see how many players we had on this question, please. Uh, 11 people having a go at this one. And uh, the information, of course, is 50 ways to leave your lover. That's what we wanted, 50 ways to leave your lover. And uh, Will Carling knows all of them. But uh, we'll take away one, and that gets to 49. 49 is what we wanted. Did we get it, though? Red for wrong and blue for true, please. <laughs> Ten people getting it right, just the one person getting it wrong. It would be embarrassing to draw attention to Tracy Baker at seat number 29. <laughs> but you're going to anyway. Pardon? <laughs> but you're going to anyway. Well, you know, Tracy, I thought you'd had your moment of glory, so That's I thought right. you could bow out in, Thank you. in glory. It's been nice having you on the show. Thank but you, Simon. This is where we leave you. Thank you very much indeed for playing. <laughs> Ten people getting it right, these were the quickest. The top three. Brian Grice. He's been heard before, he's still sort of stuck there, really. Second place, Trevor Stevenson. And our next qualifier, through in 4.2 seconds. Well done to Paul Neal, seat number 22. Nice one, Paul. <clears throat> Uh, we'll take one of Paul's twos, doesn't really matter which one, and it'll be another number for the winning line. It's the penultimate number as well, which now has these digits. A zero, two twos, a three and a nine. We have one more digit to come, and then you could be here for the first programme in our next series. Question six, folks. In the card game Canasta, two standard packs, including jokers, are dealt. How many cards are used altogether? We have 27 players. In the card game Canasta, two standard packs, including jokers, are dealt. How many cards are used altogether? OK, that's it. Time's up on our last question for this round. Let's turn the lights pink, please, of anyone who was brave enough to do this question. And that's quite an impressive display of pink. Uh, we have 22 people answering this question. Five people just don't want to be shown up, I think. Uh, 52 cards in a standard pack, uh, plus two jokers, 54. Twice that is 108. 108 is what we wanted. Did we get it? Let's turn them red and blue, please. Uh, red for wrong and blue for true. We have seven people getting it right, 15 people getting it wrong. Uh, their lights have all gone red and they're out of the game. Thanks very much indeed to everyone for playing that one. So we have seven people wondering whether they were quickest. These are the top three in reverse order, of course. Well, there's something about Brian Grice. There he is. He's always third. He's been third for the third time, Brian. <laughs> Never mind, sir. Three bronzes you get. Uh, beaten by Ken Armstrong in second place. And our next qualifier, final qualifier through in 6.05 seconds. Seat number 39, Chris Day. Well done, Chris. Well done, Chris.
fun to be there. Well done, Chris. Through in the last question. Chris is sitting at seat number 39. We'll lose the three, three and we'll keep the nine. That is the last number. Some people get very excited. Uh, our completed winning line is zero, two twos, a three, and two nines. If you have those six digits in any order in the last six of your phone number at home, then you could be here playing in the first game of our new series. I'll give you an all-important phone number to call in just one moment. So we have our six contestants for round two, and to the remaining 43 of you, like uh, Jack Nicholas at the Open, I'm afraid you've missed our cut for what's <laughs> maybe players you do. Thank you very much indeed for playing Winning Lions. Thank you. <laughs> So what have you got today at home? Well, first of all, check to see if these six numbers, zero, two twos, three and two nines, are in the last six digits of your phone number. If they are, and you must have all six in any order, and you're 16 years of age or older, then ring this free number, 0808 100 84 00. And only this number, please, before the end of the program, you'll be asked a simple general knowledge question. Get it right, and you could be joining us next series. We have... 49 to Levenis, poised to take your call. In fact, with the speed of the Queen Mum nipping down the off licence to stock up for a party, they're taking them already. But now let's play. Looking after number one. And uh, let's meet our six of the best of this week. And behind the number nine lurks Andy Watford. Hello, Andy. Hi, Simon. How are you doing, sir? I'm feeling OK. Thank you. OK. And uh, what do you do? I work for a telecommunications company in the internet mm -hmm. world. And you're married to Kika, is it? Kika, that's right. Kika, yeah. and you have a seven-month-old seven son, Eric. Yeah. And the most interesting thing, I think, uh, is that you're Andy Watford and you live in Watford. That's right. I don't mind any reference, but it's when people say Andy Watford from Watford, as in The Gap. Ah, oh, no, no, well, I won't do that. But I was just thinking, you know, it would be very useful if you've been out on the town and had a few beers and uh, you're ordering a cab and they want to know where you're from and what your name is. You only have to remember one, one thing, and that's Watford and yeah. you're sorted. <laughs> as long as you don't move to Nether Wallop or something, you'll be absolutely <laughs> fine. Andy, welcome to the show. Okay. Next is Jackie Pierce, our only uh, woman who's made it to the final six. All right, Jackie. Hello, Simon. And uh, your partner is Eddie. Yes. And yes. you're a technical manager. Yes. Yeah. That's and right. you like cooking and cycling. Yes. Not at the same time, obviously. No. <laughs> uh, but you did. Now this is big. Di you won the Miss Sunshine Girl <laughs> Award. Now, 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 where is that? When did you win that? Um, I was 12, um, and it was at Perrinport Holiday Camp. Right, now I imagine you're very proud of that. So, so what do you win if you're Miss Sunshine Girl? I won a week's holiday. Where? At Perrinport. Oh, back. Oh, yeah. you, won, you won another <laughs> week back at the same place, yeah. which I'm so, sure, obviously, was a great prize. It was, yes. Maybe we can do better on the Wonderwall if you get there. Next to you is Pete Latham. All right, Pete. All right, Simon. Welcome to the show. You're a taxi driver. And, right. uh, oh, yeah, you're the guy who I made lean forward. Yeah, that's so right. It's your hair, because it's all yours, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but only just. I'll have to speak to Tracy, see if we can get a wig sorted out for later. Oh, Tracy, from the first <laughs> down. Actually, I've already, I've already done it, and I had a word with her, and she said she's got just the thing for you to keep your hair in, and that's an envelope. Which <laughs> <laughs> she'll post to you. Uh, anyway, welcome to the show, Pete. Uh, Paul's next to you, all right, Paul? Yes, I'm fine, thanks. And welcome to the show. You're married to Sue, three kids. And what do you do? I'm in the uh, Royal Air Force. I'm a loadmaster on Hercules. And how many, how many uh, sort of air miles have you done on that? About 7,500 7, so far. 7,500. Do you get air miles in the RAF? Unfortunately not, no. You would have to come on shows like this, really, would you? No, you wouldn't. No. So you, and you want to go on a, and win a holiday, which you have to get in a plane and fly the other side of the world. I want to go slightly faster than my present one, yeah. Yes, and slightly more comfortable, maybe. Uh, Paul, welcome to the show. Next to you is Chris. All right, Chris? Yeah, hi, Simon. And uh, you're married to Debbie. And what do you do? Um, I'm an area manager for a petroleum company. For a petroleum company. OK, you have a high-class clientele? Well, most of them are, but... We have the occasional streaker who nips past the um, bike from London. The occasional streaker? Yep. Oh, Pursued by four police vehicles. Probably he's pawned his clothes to uh, afford a litre of petrol or something. I don't think you can say. Uh, Chris, welcome to the programme. Ted's next to you. Hi, Ted. Hi, Simon. Uh, what do you do, sir? I'm a planet engineer in a power station. Oh, which, which power station? Aberthaw in South Wales. All right, how many, how many uh, looking around all the lights and stuff that we have here, how many watts do you think we might need? Quite a few kilowatts, I would think. How many? How many? Oh, I don't know, 50 perhaps? 50 kilowatts for this show? Yeah. Well, we're off next week, so you can take it easy. OK. <laughs> have the afternoon off on us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our six of the best for tonight. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> it's time for round two, you know the rules. And more importantly, the contestants know the rules as well. I'm going to be asking 
Some more questions and the answers will be 9, 12, 20, 22, 39 and 43. The numbers, of course, from the first round. Our contestants have got to buzz first and get the answer right to continue. If they don't, then they're out. It's as simple as that. Let's play. Looking after number one. Andy, Jackie, Pete, Paul, Chris and Ted. 9, 12, 20, 22, 39 and 43 are the numbers that will be the answers to these questions. How many steps are featured? Yes, Pete, that was very quick. 39, hopefully. Now, I could come up with all kinds of things. How many steps are there going up the key in New Key? <laughs> could be anything, couldn't it? How many steps are featured in the title of John Buchan's famous novel? The answer is 39. 39 steps. You interrupted brilliantly, and you've knocked Chris out of the game. We have an aggressive player in our midst. Next question. President John F. Kennedy was assassinated on which date in November 1963? That's it. Time's up. We're going to lose somebody. He was assassinated November 1963. It was the 22nd of November. 22. That was you, Paul. You should have pressed. You didn't. I'm afraid we lose you from the game. Okay, we've lost Paul and Chris, Andy, Jackie, Pete and Ted. In Jerry Anderson's TV series, how old was Joe 90? Andy Watford from Watford. 12. He was nine. I'm sorry, he was nine, Andy. We lose you from the game. He sounded so confident, it was the wrong answer, though. Next question. According to Noel Coward's Mad Dogs and Englishmen, what time is it when natives... Yes, Pete. 12 o'clock, midday sun. Full question. What time is it when natives swoon and no further work is done? The answer is at 12 noon. You're absolutely right. You've knocked Jackie out of the game. Sorry, Jackie. Here we go, folks. It's the head-to-head. -head. You're both winners. One of you gets to the Wonder Wall. The other gets the luxury weekend away. They're both good, though admittedly one is slightly better than the other. Pete against Ted. The answer to this question will be either 20 or 43. Here we go. Scylla Black was born in 19 what? Ted. 43. She was born the 27th of May, 1943. It's the right answer. It's your number. You stay in the game. Here we go. Next question. Which number, when repeated, describes normal eyesight? Pete. 20. As in 2020. Is exactly right. It's your number. You stay in the game. I said it before, it's like one of those tie breaks. So it can be over immediately or it can go on. We move on. Next question. Which number follows the letter E to give the postcode of Wolford in East... Pete Latham. 43. In East Enders. The answer is E20. It's your number. You should have said it. You didn't, which I'm afraid you're eliminated from the game. And the winner is Ted Higgins, who's going to play the Wonder Wall. Well done, Ted. Power worker from Care Philly. We'll be seeing you a bit later. Pete, you were a very, very brave contestant. And uh, I think the audience likes the way you play. And, of course, you don't go away empty-handed because you have won this. <laughs> Of course, there are going to be, uh, we're going to put cameras in every room so we can do a peep show on you, which would be very nice. <laughs> I hope you have a lovely time when you go away. Cheers. And uh, could you start tonight's Thunderball draw? Yeah, great. OK, walk that way, sure. please. <laughs> so, Alan, I understand you're leaving me for an older man. <laughs> 
Uh, yes, for the next six weeks or so, I'm promised to uh, Des O'Connor, actually. <laughs> I can just imagine you and Des trundling around the country in the back of the BBC minibus, singing along at the top of your voice to One, Two, Three O'Leary and other such fine hits. Oh, I remember those. We're on the road taking in Birmingham, Glasgow, Cardiff, Southampton. Yes, you think the bus already. will be up to it? Uh, just about, I'd have thought. Whether you are, of course, is another question. Uh, but tell us what we could win tonight, you promiscuous old hussy. Well, in this, the first of our two ball games tonight, he knows me so well, the chances of winning are greater. What you can win ranges from a fiver up to a possible quarter of a million pounds, but the ball that can make all the difference for you, Simon, the Thunderball. Well, let's give the old girl one more turn before you stick casters on her and tow around the country, shall we? Draw Master John Willem. Welcome back. Please start up the first machine. And release the balls, if you would. Last weekend, we had no Thunderball jackpot winners, but 12 runners-up did manage to match five without the Thunderball to win five grand apiece. Up to you on this Saturday night. Sam, the machine seems to be up to speed. Let's do the drawing. I think it's this one. Blue one first. Well done. A firm hand. First one out with number 13. Next. Up she comes, 19. Let's have a third one. I don't mind if I do. There it is, 31. Come on, come on. I'm impatient. 27. And the last one from this machine. Fifth one is number 23. Right, move over to the second machine now, John, if you would. Press that button, and then we can release the Thunderballs. There they go. Seeing fair play tonight, incidentally, on this and the National Lottery game coming up later with the rollover, uh, independent adjudicator, John Ellis. OK, Simon, let's do it. OK, and uh, may you have better luck than to find yourself playing golf against Tiger Woods. That's the red one. This is it, then. As we draw the ball, that could make all the difference for you tonight. There it is! Number five! Right, let's check off tonight's Thunderball numbers. In ascending order, they are 13, 19, 23, 27, 31, and number five is the Thunderball! Now, don't forget, we've uh, still got the National Lottery draw coming up in a few minutes' time, and it's a rollover, of course. Ted. Hi, Simon. All right, now, you have this calm exterior. You're a calm and controlled person? Be a little bit better, yes. You're feeling OK? Yeah. Palm sweaty? Yeah, a little. Just a little bit? Yeah. Should we find you a nice holiday? Yes, please. OK, we'll see what we can do. In a moment, I'm going to start asking Ted a series of questions. The answers to those questions are going to appear shortly on the wonder wall behind him. The answers, of course, are numbered 1 to 49, and Ted has to give me the correct answer and its number before we carry on. And as usual, the more he gets right, the further the flight. Precisely so. If he gets 20 right, it's three weeks round the world. Ted, you've got three minutes. It'd be great if you could win that round the world trip. We've had two on the series so far. It'd be nice to go out in big style. That pit stop button that you've got in front of you gives you 15 seconds of free time. You can hit it twice within the three minutes. Use it if you just think, help, I need some more time to look at this board, OK? okay. Two in three minutes. I wish you all the best. Let's Thank play you. Wonderwall. <laughs> Reveal the answers, please. Ted, you're looking at 49 answers. They all have numbers next to them. Take in as much as you possibly can in these brief seconds before we start. We wish you all the best. OK, we're playing. Which celebratory drink is nicknamed Bubbly? Champagne 18. Correct. Which breed of dog is a favourite of the royal family? Corgi 2. Correct. Which sport is a game played on lanes, in alleys, with pins and balls? Bowling, 17. Correct. Which Italian physicist pioneered the invention and development of radio? Flying start. Two minutes and 36 seconds on the clock. This is pit stop number one. 
You're looking for the answer to this question. Which Italian physicist pioneered the invention and development of radio? And we're playing again. Marconi 13, correct. Which one of the three R's actually begins with a W? Writing nine, correct. What colour are your fingertips metaphorically said to be if you're good at gardening? Here comes pit stop number two then, two minutes and nine. Taking them early. It's always good tactics. Ted, you're looking for the answer to this question. What colour are your fingertips metaphorically said to be if you're good at gardening? We're playing again. Green 41, correct. What specific type of book is the OED? 15 dictionary. Correct. What can you find out by dialing 123 on the telephone? Time 43. Correct. Benjamin was the first name of which Victorian Prime Minister? Israeli 44. Correct. Which evergreen shrub, considered lucky, shares its name with a girl? Heather 25. Correct. Which crown colony was handed back to China at midnight? Hong Kong 30. Correct. What is a list of things to be discussed at a meeting? Agenda 5. Correct. Which bloodthirsty character is associated with Transylvania? Dracula 23. Correct. What is the surname of pop star brothers Liam and Noel? Gallagher 48. Correct. Which nocturnal bird of prey can turn its head 180 degrees? Owl one, uh, 10. Correct. What is the specific name for an area of cultivated fruit trees? Orchard 37. Correct. In, in Irish folklore, what is the Leprechaun name? Leprechaun 4. Correct. Which English city has a football team with Wednesday in its name? Sheffield 45. Correct. Which type of rock music began in Seattle and gave Grunge rise? 27. Correct. What is the background colour of the road signs on British motorways? Blue 39. Is the right answer. <laughs> That was extraordinary. There were like 39 seconds to go. You're taking the, hang on, I'll just check. 30, 30 yeah. seconds to go. You're taking the mickey. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you've cleaned us out. And, now I, I suppose I should, you know, I don't, you know, you knew grunge as well in Seattle and rock and baggy clothes and all that <laughs> stuff. We are very, very impressed. Do you want to watch a nice piece of film? Yes, please. Watch this screen. That we can do is for our biggest prize. Thank you, Simon. Your winner, number three. It's the last show of the series, and you have three weeks round the world. And you're taking? My wife. <laughs> it's also the right answer. <laughs> so have a fantastic time. Send us loads of postcards. And could you start tonight's National Lottery? Of course I will, Simon. Excellent. Come down this way. <laughs> BBC One and Radio 5 Live. It's time for this weekend's National Lottery Draw. And it's a rollover! Tonight's prize fund has been estimated at £28,500,000. So how's this for a rollover jackpot? Something like £11.8 million. Pounds. Sure, Master John Willen, let's do it. Let's release tonight's rollover ball. And set of balls number seven tonight. And that's thanks to Betty Boyle from Ormskirk. Now to start the draw, Ted Higgins from Caffilly, winner of Around the World Trip on tonight's winning line. Simon. 
Ted, the Tiger Woods of winning lines, your message. Good luck to everybody, especially people at Aberthorpe Power Station. Very nice. It's the 67th time the jackpot's rolled over in the almost six-year history of the National Lottery. Here we go with tonight's draw, then. First out, case number 13. Last time it emerged was from Merlin, all the 20 weekends ago, 43rd time now as a main ball. Next, 45. Third draw in eight weeks. Could do better, that one. 73rd National Lottery appearance. Let's have a third one. 16. Completed Millionaire's Road last Saturday night, you'll recall. 50th time now as a main lottery ball. Next. 47. Last drawn just the half dozen weekends ago. 78 National Lottery appearances under that one's belt. Let's have another one. Another yellow, 48. First number drawn three Saturdays ago here in Wembley. 71st time we've seen that one. Let's have another, 43. What a night, last appeared some five Saturdays ago. 78th National Lottery appearance. Will we have another rollover on our hands? The bonus tonight, 36. This Saturday night's winning numbers again, this time in ascending order. 13, 16. 43, 45, 47, and 48. The bonus, 36. That's it. I'm afraid we're out of time. We've just got time to see how we're getting on with the contestants for our first show next year. Our telephonists look pretty busy. And according to our computer, we've already got 41 of our contestants. Don't forget, if you have a zero, two twos, three, and two nines in the last six digits of your phone number in any order, and you're 16 or over, then ring our free phone number, and only this number now, 0808 100 8400. Before 8.15 tonight, we'll see you next year. Good night.